In this video, I'll show you three ways to have a 2D camera track in front of a moving object based on its velocity or throttle controls. I've created a simple script to control a small spaceship. If you want to use my script to follow along, I'll link it below. I'm also linking the art asset for the spaceship, which was created by Balder and Fuzel, available for free on itch.io. In the ship script, I'm storing the player's throttle control input in this thrust variable, which we can use to control how far ahead our camera will look as part of the camera script. Let's create a new script to control the camera. Drag it onto the camera object to add it. Let's open up the script and get coding. First, let's add a public reference to the object we're following. For me, this is a ship type script, but match the name of the script you're using to control your character or vehicle. So I'm just typing public ship and I'm naming the variable target. I'm going to change update to late update. This is because late update happens after all other update code is called on other scripts. So it's a good idea to do this for things like cameras to make sure that we're following the new position of any objects as opposed to their previous position. I'm also going to delete all of these default comments and the entire start method as I won't be needing it. Inside late update, let's make a new vector3 variable called target position, and let's set it to the current position of the ship by using target.transform.position. Now to move our camera to that target position that we've stored, we can simply set transform.position of the camera to the target position. Don't forget to drag your ship object into the target slot in the inspector of the camera script. Before we hit play, let's separate out the game view from the scene view so we can see both side by side. You can do that just by dragging the window down here and resizing. This will be useful when we're debugging our camera controls. Now when we hit play, you can see that we can't actually see our ship at all in the game view, which is obviously a problem. To figure out why, let's click the button to switch between the 2D and 3D view in the scene view. Now we'll be able to see the depth of our scene. We can quite quickly see that our camera is occupying exactly the same space as our ship. As a result, it's too close to see it. If we pause the game, we can move the camera so that the ship is in front of it, it comes into view. To fix this, we can make sure the Z position of the camera, or the forward position of the camera, never changes by setting the Z value of the target position to the current Z position of the camera using transform.position.z. Now when we play the game, we can see the ship in the game view now, because the camera is actually offset slightly in front of the ship. So now our camera is centered over the ship, but our goal here is to get the camera to move in front of the ship. We can start to achieve this by adding the forward direction of the ship to our target position. In 2D, we usually want to use transform.up. Depending which way around your sprite is drawn, you may need to use transform.right instead. Let's just increase the target position by target.transform.up. This should now center the camera one unit in front of our ship. And that seems to be working. You can confirm in the scene view that the camera object's a little way in front of the ship. To get the distance ahead of the ship to increase based on our thrust value, we can simply multiply transform.up by the current thrust amount from the ship script. In my case, this is target.thrust, but that's just because that was the name I gave the variable I'm storing the input in the ship script. If you're using a different ship control script, you may need to find a different variable, or maybe even create one if you haven't set one up to store that forward velocity input. Now when I press play, you can see as I increase my throttle input, the camera moves further in front of the ship. That's what we want. To change how far ahead the camera moves, we can simply multiply the offset we've been calculating by another value. Let's use a public float variable, and that way we'll be able to tweak it in the inspector later. I'll call mine distance multiplier, and I'll give it a default value of three. Now I simply multiply by that variable in our line adding to the target position. Now when I hit play, you can see the camera moves three times as far ahead of the ship. And we can dial this amount in by changing the value in the inspector. Bear in mind that when you exit play mode, these values will be reset to however they were before you entered play mode. If you want to save them, a quick way is to right click on the script and choose copy component, then exit play mode, right click the script again, and select paste as values. Now you can see our value is back. So right now our camera control is quite jarring and very abruptly changes as I press and release the throttle. One way to smooth this out is by using a built-in function called lerp. This stands for linear interpolation, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to smoothly move between two values. 
and we can use it to smoothly change our camera offset. To make this a bit easier to do, let's move our offset calculation into a temporary vector 3 variable. I'll call it target offset and simply cut and paste the calculation from our code into this line. Now we've stored in the variable the relative position from the ship that we want the camera to try and get to. To keep track of the camera's current offset between frames, let's create a private vector3 variable for the current offset. Now back in late update, we can finally use lerp. Type current offset equals, and then vector3.lerp. Now if you type an open bracket, our code editor should now give us some info on the values we need to enter into the lerp function. The vectors a and b are the two positions we want to lerp smoothly between, so in our case that's the current offset position and the target offset position. The third value t is a float number indicating how far between those values we want to be. Let's pick a really small value like 0.1 so we very gradually move between the two. Note that we have an error here because we need to add an f after after any number with a decimal point to signify a float value. This is because c -sharp defaults to a different kind of variable for fractions, called a double, but all Unity functions usually expect a float, so we need to specify the f here. Lastly, we need to multiply our t value by time.delta time. This is to make sure it moves smoothly regardless of frame rate. You need to do this with any value that does something over time, during an update or late update. Now we just need to feed our modified current offset into the original line, adding it to the target position. Now if we enter play mode, we can see that the camera really slowly edges towards the target position. If we want to make how responsive the camera is adjustable, we can do this by adding another public float variable to the top of our script for the responsiveness. Now we simply substitute our hard-coded 0.1 for the responsiveness variable. In play mode, we can now play with this variable to make the camera as responsive as we wish. Don't forget to set it after exiting play mode. So that's the first method done. It works well if you have access to the input variables for your controller. Another way, which may be better for you, is to instead control the offset based on the current velocity of the rigid body attached to the ship. To implement this, instead of referencing our control script, in my case that's ship, Let's swap it out for a rigid body 2D reference. If we keep the name as target, most of our code from before will still work. As we're no longer reading the thrust input, let's remove that from the target offset calculation. We're also not going to need transform.up either, as we're going to get the direction to move the camera from the velocity. We can simply multiply the target velocity by the distance multiplier, and this will get us both the direction we want and the scale we want. Let's hop back into play mode and see what happens. Because we changed the type of the target variable, we got an error here, so we need to reassign it in the inspector by dragging in the ship again. Our ship is quite quickly falling off screen because the velocity value is scaling our offset by a much bigger amount than before. So we can scale down the distance multiplier to get this to work a little better. Now you can see the camera moves ahead of the ship's movement direction regardless of which way the ship is actually facing. However, the ship is still falling off screen sometimes because the velocity is a little less predictable than what we were using before. We probably want to just limit how far the camera can go from the target. We can do this by using a function called clamp magnitude. To break down what that means, clamping a value is to limit it within a range and magnitude just means the size or length of a vector. So we're going to limit the length of our offset vector. First, let's create a new public float variable for the maximum offset distance we want. I'll set this to 5 by default. Now, after our target offset calculation, let's set the target offset to a new clamped value. Set it equal to vector3.clamp magnitude, and when you open bracket, we'll see some suggestions again. The first argument is the vector we want to clamp, so that's our target offset, and the second argument is the maximum length we want it to have, so that will be our new max offset variable. And it's as simple as that. Now if we enter play mode, we'll see that our camera can't go more than 5 units away from the ship. It can be a little hard to see what our camera's trying to do now, because it might be trying to reach a target offset position that's outside of its maximum range. To make this a little clearer, let's add a debug line. 
This will show us the target position the camera is trying to reach. Before the line when we clamp our target offset, type debug.drawArray. Here we set the position we want our line to start from, that's going to be the target position, which at this point is the position of the ship, and then after the comma is the vector for the direction and distance the line should go, so that's going to be our target offset. Now when we enter play mode, we can see in the scene view there's a white line drawn from the ship towards the target position. This should help us choose the right values for our distance multiplier and max offset to get the feel we want for the camera. And that's the second method all done. The third and final method I'll show is if you want the camera to only try and move directly ahead of the ship and not account for its sideways velocities. To achieve this, we can use another built-in function called Vector3Dot to find the forward component of the velocity only. Vector3Dot is a mathematical function called a dot product, which I won't explain in much detail here, but if you want a full explanation of how it works, I'll leave a link in the description to some useful help pages from the Unity docs. For our purposes, we can just pass in the velocity and a direction, and it will tell us the speed in just that direction. To implement this, before setting the target offset, let's make a new float called forward speed, and set it to the dot product of the velocity and the target's up direction. Now we've calculated the forward speed. Now let's remove the velocity from our target offset calculation, and we'll do something more similar to our original version. We'll take the transform up direction, and we'll multiply that by the forward speed. Now the camera's only trying to go directly ahead of the ship by a distance equal to the forward speed of the ship. To visualise this, you can see our white line in the scene view is only ever pointing directly ahead of the ship now and isn't accounting for any sideways momentum of the ship anymore. And that's three ways to look ahead in Unity 2D. Please click some thumbs if you found this helpful, and if you have any questions you'd like to see me answer, let me know in the comments below. To see my next tutorials, hit the bell and subscribe.